Hello everyone. So if you're not aware, I actually had my round two debate with Piers Morgan finally after five years. I appeared on his show when he was on Good Morning Britain about five years ago and we debated is milk murder. Basically, Piers didn't know that cows are actually slaughtered in the dairy industry. His final argument was that I have a criminal history, so who am I to say what is and isn't murder? You don't believe in harming other human beings? I don't believe in harming other human beings or animals, no. So in, in September 2011, you were arrested when police found a loaded, sawn-off pump-action Oh, a rifle. character attack. Basically trying to debunk my argument with an appeal to hypocrisy, which is Piers Morgan's lowball tactic he likes to use. Yeah, so I arrived actually a week earlier to do this debate. It got cancelled, and it was supposed to be with someone else. A week later, they invited me back to get this debate on the roll, but it was with this guy who banned all vegans from his restaurant. So it just changed suddenly. So I had to keep on my toes. Here's me arriving at the front of the newsroom. I even brought some vegan donuts for the crew, seeing as the crew were actually really nice to me and uh, really accommodating, really nice people in there. So I was prepared for Piers Morgan, but you can only be so prepared once the lights start rolling in the, and it's live and it's basically Piers Morgan's domain. You really don't know what to expect and sometimes adrenaline can get the better of you and things like that. But when it was my turn to go on, I uh, said hello to Piers, shook his hand and he said, hey, mate, how are you? We were quite friendly, actually. And I said, congratulations on your award that you won for your Ronaldo interview. And he said, oh, thank you. Thank you. No worries. But I said to him, you know what they should have given you an award for? The biggest anti-vegan troll on earth. And he kind of laughed and he said, you know, I don't actually mind vegans too much. You know, I just don't like them playing uh, slaughter footage in restaurants. And I should share footage of bees being slaughtered. And because they're hypocrites, you know? But anyway, that was the conversation before the camera started rolling. But you know what we're gonna do? I thought maybe we could just uh, watch the debate together and review it kind of thing, because uh, so much happens in those debates. It's very fast moving, fast pace. I'm getting ambushed. The other speaker's allowed to speak. He's constantly interrupting me and trying to throw me off. It's a lot easier from home thinking, oh, you should have done this, should have done that. But when you're in there, it's difficult. Ask anyone who's been in, in a live TV situation with someone ambushing them. So let's go. Welcome back to Piers Morgan Uncensored. Veganism, the art of eschewing all pleasure in life, is one of the 21st century's most bizarre trends from where I look at it. See how he looks at it as like pleasure, like eating the bodies of animals is a pleasurable experience. That's his argument. I like eating meat. I love it. It's tasty. It's almost like he thinks that because you derive pleasure from an action, it justifies the action. And he believes that vegans don't have fun or derive pleasure from their food or anything like this or from things they do. An absolute load of crap. Vegans eat all the same foods that non-vegans eat, burgers, bacon, uh, hot dogs, ice cream, chocolate. And we also have relationships and go out and have fun. We just don't support the rights violations of non-human animals. But there are green plant-based shoots of recovery. The new fashion is for high-profile vegans, including explorer Bear Grylls, to revealing the detransitioning back to healthy, meaty diets. And so many chefs like John Mountain, who runs Fire Restaurant in Perth, Australia, is also leading the fight back. He's made global headlines this week after announcing, sadly, all vegans are banned from fire for mental health reasons. We thank you for your understanding. I mean, if David Rams is watching, this is probably the biggest meat flake of the year here, this guy here. One thing I didn't get to say to him, I had a few other things I wanted to say to this absolute loser, in my opinion. Just a sook, softy, just crybaby. Why would you leverage mental health reasons from a small complaint that was made saying that you wouldn't accommodate vegans? You got some complaints for it. You're a celebrity chef. You go on to, to make this post, which blows it way out of proportion, makes it even worse, goes on a massive media run, getting all in front of the cameras. He got up at 3 a.m. in Australia. It was 3 a.m. when this debate was on just to talk to Piers Morgan and, in my opinion, get publicly embarrassed. But for mental health reasons, he banned all vegans. Like, mate, you, you obviously don't have that bad of mental health issues, right? I've suffered mental health issues. I know how bad it can be. You obviously don't have that bad of mental health issues if you just aggravated a whole community of people and then went on a massive media run publicly and then you're on live tv with pierce morgan you got up at 3 a.m for it if you had mental health issues you'd be like no nah, man i've got to stay keep to myself now this is too much liar many didn't understand he's been flooded with fake bookings and hostile reviews it's because he banned a whole group of people from his restaurant, people that didn't even know about his restaurant till he banned them all. Imagine if you had a restaurant and you you said to a guy who uh, wanted some halal product there, and then you promised you would give him that halal food, and then when he arrived there was no halal food, or like you gave him some broccoli on a plate, he complained, and then you banned all Muslims from your restaurant. You know, that's the equivalent. And then he complains when he got a bunch of bad reviews. John Mountain, why did you ban vegans from your restaurant? Uh, morning, Piers. Uh, I banned them from my restaurant because, look, I've been a chef for nearly 30 years, but on this particular incident, it was just too much, you know. Fragile 
insecure shell of a man. Been a chef for 30 years, can't handle a complaint or two. They grouped together, which, you know, I'm very proud of the vegans for all sticking together. But they did. They grouped and banded together and then started hammering my business with one star reviews. Because he said in his message that he won't accommodate vegans or he, he just accommodates everyone else but vegans, even though he told her that he would accommodate her. And she shared the post. He got some bad reviews off the back of it. It's your own doing. I saw my rating drop from a sensible 4.2 down to 2.8. They, they nearly broke me. It's probably not hard to break you, mate, seeing as you're the biggest snowflake I've ever seen in my life. What was the incident that provoked all this? The problem that happened was a girl had uh, emailed me three weeks before uh, requesting a, a vegan selection. I, and I said, well, look, rather than saying that, what is it that you like? Tell me what you like. She sent me all the DMs. I think I'll make a separate video about this guy, actually. But he, he just goes on to say, it was a justifiable complaint. You know, I let her down. Well, if it's a justifiable complaint, why'd you ban all vegans because of it? Because you got some more bad reviews. And now he's just brought a bunch of heat and attention. He's probably a bit of an attention seeker, this guy. That's what I reckon. I, I couldn't do it. I, I let her down. And it was yeah. a justifiable complaint. He let her down. It was a justifiable complaint. Then why'd you blow it out of proportion, mate? You know, and ban all vegans because of it. Because he's a fragile narcissist. That's why. In my opinion, obviously, I'm not a psychologist and I don't actually know for sure, but he's definitely showing some narcissistic traits. Can't handle criticism, blows things out of proportion, blames everyone else for his wrongdoings, can't handle complaints. And, and he's got a history of this the way he reacts to, to criticism is not good. And uh, I actually bring that up in this debate anyway. And she went nuts. Yeah, slightly nuts, as I mean, they do. She didn't go nuts at all. She just uh, left, uh, you know, some criticism for him and he couldn't handle it. My thing about vegans is they tend to be, I don't know, they seem to me permanently hangry. Because you constantly aggravate them, Pierce, mate. Every interaction you've ever had with a vegan, you just constantly aggravate them and ambush them and they can never speak. And obviously we see a lot of suffering and murder and killing and cruelty and things like this. Stuff that you just completely stick your head in the sand about. So, you know, you've got a nice cushy little life there. Every interaction Pierce Morgan's probably had with a vegan has been where he's trying to ambush them, expose them and embarrass them. Like the lack of meat in their diet makes them very intolerant <laughs> of people and they get very agitated. And if you don't sign up to all things vegan in the way that they want you to, all hell breaks loose. Well, Pierce, if you want to see all hell break loose, look into the farms where you get your uh, flesh from. Vegans are very tolerant people. We even tolerate other species, uh, the, the same species that you destined to get decapitated for your lifestyle and then, you know, go on to appeal to hypocrisy every time someone brings it up to you. I think that seems to be the issue, um, Pierce, to be honest. I think they're just missing a really good burger or a glass of milk, you know, or both. Uh, you know, they need to sleep more. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, that's the most childish, low-grade thing. It's probably the, the height of the intelligent argument you'll get out of this guy here. I'd love to face this guy and see how much of a hero he really is. I mean, some of the comments he was leaving, oh, mate, I'm, like, he's acting like a massive tough guy. Guy's a shell of a man, insecure, you know, or oh, maybe if they had a burger. Well, maybe if you stop decapitating animals and posing with dead piglets, um, you know, maybe you have a little bit of morality about you. You know, could have easily turned this into a vegan restaurant. But now he just bans all vegans, aggravates and takes photos with uh, murdered animals and uh, makes stupid remarks like this. Be a bit more healthy. Although, you know, the vegan diet allegedly is healthy, just not for everybody else, you know. I think each to their own. Uh, each to their own, except for the animals that have to walk down the kill line, hey? What about their interests? No, they don't get no choice. Each to their own, except for that group of the moral community. OK, let's come to Joey. So, Joey, Bear Grylls, who I know well. So Here I am. So, I was not expecting him to go on and talk about Bear Grylls. I actually tuned out when he first introduced this. <laughs> I was like, oh, God, I'm about to speak. What am I going to say? So, he's embarrassed he used to promote veganism. Uh, he now eats a diet of red meat, blood, bone marrow, as well as salted butter, eggs, fruit and honey. He says he's never felt better. Well, that's an anecdote, Pierce. The guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, maybe he just eradicated a bunch of processed food from his diet. Who knows what he did? But just because one person feels better from making a temporary diet change, you can't then extrapolate that out to the whole population and say that this is a health-promoting way to eat. Eating butter and meat and you know, eggs and all this stuff. You're going to have to go with data and not your mate's little anecdote. Talking about his transition to a vegan diet, he said, I was vegan quite a few years ago. I thought I wrote a vegan cookbook. I now feel a bit embarrassed about that because I promoted I thought that was good for the environment. I thought it was good for my health. And through time and experience and knowledge and study, I realized I was wrong on both. 
You mean just watching Paul Saladino videos, you realised you were wrong because you're so easily hoodwinked by a nonsense Paul Saladino bullcrap where he just publishes low-grade rat studies and stands shouting in front of a fridge about how broccoli will kill you and you fell for that because you're an absolute simpleton. Paul Saladino thinks vegetables are unhealthy. And uh, this is one of the inspirations of Bear Grylls. When he asked me this, I, I was actually not prepared for it. So I'm always going to be a little bit more, just a little bit more jumpy first going into the conversation. He's embarrassed to that he promoted a plant-based diet when he drinks urine and bile out of a uh, camel's stomach. Urine? He drinks bile out of a dead camel's stomach. This is what Pierce says here. Urine's quite healthy though. It's healthy? Would you drink urine? Would you rather drink urine? Absolutely, than if, if I had to, yeah, if I was in the yeah, but he... This is how much of a contrarian uh, Pierce Morgan is, you know. Just to take the alternative view, he says that he will drink urine. <laughs> That's how, he didn't even think that through. Absolutely, I'll drink urine if I had to. Nah, it's healthy though, eh? Like, go on, Pierce. How about I make you a nice, fresh, warm glass of piss, mate? You can drink it down on camera. He's embarrassed that he uh, now, that he uh, promoted a vegan diet and he's not embarrassed of his behaviour on TV and he thinks that eating the bodies of animals... Why are vegans uh, so angry? <clears throat> yeah, you interrupted me there, but I think this was a good segue into the next story about this guy. Well, um, he, he made a statement saying uh, the vegans are hangry and angry, but he carried on and banned all vegans from his restaurant because of one simple complaint. What a fragile man to ban a whole group of people over that. He's allowed to. Yeah, he's allowed to ban a whole group of people. From well, he's a chef who's just sick of tailoring to vegan well, people who want to have all this stuff. and They don't want to have all this stuff. They just want you to remove certain products to make it vegan and make it substantial enough. He, she got served a bowl of vegetables, a bit of broccoli, a couple of chickpeas on a plate for $32. So, like, yeah, he could have made something substantial for her, even though she contacted him three weeks in advance. Then she contacted him five days in advance. He agreed to, to accommodate her both of those times, and then when she rocked up, she got a plate of broccoli because he forgot get angry about me well, listen song. listen listen wait a second he he got a two uh he got a two-star review when he was on um great british menu right he'd ripped mm. off his mic smashed up the studio and said that he wanted to kill the guy for giving him a two-star review of a fish dish that he made he didn't ban all <laughs> fish eaters took from his restaurant well, you were you were didn't ban so the idea here was not to have a personal attack on this guy the idea was to show that this guy can't handle criticism so he got a two-star review from another celebrity chef on this uh on great british menu and because he got a two-star review for his fish dish, maybe it was crap. And he flipped out over it. And my point was, he can't handle, handle criticism, obviously. It wasn't that he smashed the place up. It's just a reflection of him not being able to handle criticism. And then I went on to say, he didn't ban all fish eaters because of this or meat eaters because of this. So he got a, a complaint that he reacted to even more so than this one from the vegan. And he didn't overshoot and go on banning all meat eaters because it would be the end of his business, but he can easily ban a minority is what I'm saying. And that was my point. But Pierce goes on to say, well, you did something bad too. Why not, Joey, Joey, so, Joey, Joey, we're gonna get, Joey, Listen. we're going to get personal. You were a gang member, so don't take the high moral ground of um, smashing something no, up. Am I, am I? Like in a live discussion, I was like, oh, we're talking about my gang history here, but really I made a point about he didn't ban all fish eaters, but Pierce didn't address that. And he instead went, to appeal to my to hypocrisy of me, hey man, you were a gang member, la la la. I'm completely honest about True. it. True. There's been documentaries made right, about it. So don't take the high moral ground hey, about I'm losing your one, temper. Hey, I'm you were literally who, in a gang. I was ten years ago. Ten years sober now. You're gonna use. I'm another, just saying, if you're uh, gonna get personal with him, anyway. I wasn't getting personal with him. I was making a logical like argument. I was saying, here he is. He's showing he can't show criticism, like flipping out over you know, a bad review instead of just reflecting and going, you know, maybe I could have done that better. It's never his fault. You know what I mean? It's never something this guy done wrong. And then saying that he didn't ban all fish eaters because of it. I was making an argument. You didn't address the argument. You just went and go, well, you're in a gang. <laughs> he was, <laughs> it went over your head, Piercy boy. Come on, mate. Come on, Pierce. Anyways, I don't walk around with uh, dead baby pigs facing them like that. Like, does that look like someone oh, who really a gives a damn about animals? Picture. Like, you know, this was my um, way of trying to make it more about the animals. So I was using this picture, profile picture to show this guy he doesn't care about animals at all. And I was using this picture as a segue to talk about pigs. And he, that's, he, he, that, that's his profile picture. Looking at a dead pig. Joey, in Australia, Joey, in Australia, in Australia one second, I just want to say Joey, this. In me... Australia, pigs are killed in gas chambers, okay? They right. cause pigs, they're, they're horrible. Have you seen footage from inside a gas chamber? Joey, here's the thing. I recently exposed one in the UK. Yeah. They Carbon scream dioxide. to death and beg for mercy. Okay. In Perth, there's a gas chamber called Lindley Valley Pork, right? And this guy serves pork at his restaurant. Right. And why would you be more Joey? upset that, of a little complaint as a chef than pigs being murdered Let in gas chambers? This guy's got a cook 
book called Pig. He once had a restaurant that only served pork. He lives in Perth where there's a gas chamber. Um, there's gas chambers all over Australia, which have been exposed and there's footage everywhere. And what baffles me is it's causing more outrage that this vegan complained about a $32 plate of vegetables. Him flipping out, banning all vegans, right? He's getting all this support. Nothing is being said about the pigs being murdered in gas chambers that he sells out of his restaurant. You know what I mean? Okay, let me ask you the question that I asked a vegan activist the other day. Yeah, I knew what he was going to say. I already had a bunch of stuff prepared, but with Pierce, he doesn't let the debate flow. He won't address my claims. He, d he just keeps hammering and hammering on the same point. But I was already prepared for this. Okay. Which is that given that 80% uh, or 90% of the world's almonds come from California, where they are made in the involving the demolition of billions of bees who get murdered, how do you feel about the little guys? They don't guys? get murdered. Um, that's completely false, and I don't know why... How many billions... Speak. They do not get murdered. So this is where him and I, like where he doesn't understand what I'm saying. He's saying they get murdered. So the commercial honey industry rent out their bees. They want the bees to come back. They don't want them to be murdered. Murder is where you kill someone deliberately. What are they doing? Going up the bees, chopping their heads off like they do to cows. Like the way he frames it and the way he phrases this is disingenuous, okay? So it's trying to frame vegans as murderers. When murder doesn't take place, yes, bees die. Yeah, there are certain stresses that harm the bees, travel and things like this from pollination, but bees die in the wild too. <laughs> There's certain stresses in the wild, like weather and climate and all these things for wild bees. And what I'm saying is it's not murder. <laughs> Excuse How many me, billions of bees die in, in the pollination? I've got the 2022 data right on, here. Then. They die mostly from parasites and pests. 66% die mm. of uh, varroa mites or other pests and parasites. But Some in die the making, from disease. In the making Excuse me, of no, almonds no. and avocado. Well, you could just say in the making of honey. Commercial beekeeping. What he's saying is that they're getting these varroa mites directly related to pollination. Now, the leading killer of these bees right from 2022 was varroa mites. So we got to 45%. And when you look up some of the research, like there's this study here, it's a big systematic review. It's called Migratory Beekeeping and its Influence on the Prevalence and Dispersal of Pathogens to Managed and Wild Bees. And when you actually scroll down to varroa mites here, the, the number one killer of bees in um, 2022 was this varroa mite, right? Called the varroa destructor. So some studies reported a significant increase in varroa loads in migratory colonies, a non-significant significant effect on the, of the management or a higher prevalence in stationary operations. So some studies showed that, that there was a higher prevalence of this kind of mite in operations that didn't move around. There's another study that did not find any impact of the movement of hires on varroa load when the migratory colonies had just arrived, but one month later, mites load was higher in stationary colonies. This was interesting too. Additionally, there was one study focused on the development of resistant to treatments for varroa, depending on the management of the honeybee hives migratory versus stationary. Interestingly, these authors found an increase of the resistance to treatments in stationary colonies. So basically the ones that moved around weren't resistant to treatment for the mites. So the ones that stayed still were resistant to treatments. So if you want to see where we got this from, it's here, USA facts, how much have the USB populations fallen and why? And then you can just scroll down here to, um, this stat statistic from the US Department of Agriculture, varroa mites, 45%, other pests and parasites, diseases, pesticides, other. I will say this, that uh, certain things um, are affected by bee migration, like um, there might be more of a spread of certain pathogens, or sometimes the travel causes certain stresses on the bees. But Pierce Morgan is framing the deaths in pollination as murder, which is disingenuous and not true. <laughs> oh, they do. They do. What, the data no, no. is here. It's this here. Do you know where I read this? Here this here is data from US Department of Agriculture. Do you know where I read this? Wait, I read it in The Guardian, oh, the vegan no, Bible. Well, you misread the, their article anyway, didn't you? They never said the bees are murdered. They're rented from the honey industry, right? And they want the bees to come back. 6.7%. This is not... You don't and care also, about the little guys. We boycott... Billions honey. of bees get honey, murdered and bees, you don't care. Where do those bees come from? Huh? Where do those bees come In America, from? they come from all over where? the country. The commercial honey industry. That's true. And, and a lot what, of them do. do. A lot of them do. Most of them, I think it's like two thirds of them do. What do vegans boycott? Go on. The, the commercial honey industry. Why don't you boycott almonds and avocados? Because... I don't see a reason to. Most of the bees are dying from mites. Do you see pollination you see a reason on the to. List? Okay. Well, pollination is not on the list, but what I was meant to say kind of thing is like murder from pollination. <laughs> if you look at the research here, the information about the varroa destructor was, was highly heterogeneous. I'll learn how to say that word, meaning some studies showed an increase in varroa load. Some studies showed no difference. Sometimes showed a higher prevalence in stationary bees that didn't uh, move around and that stationary colonies were resistant to treatments. 
So when it comes to varroa mites, which is the number one killer of these bees, um, and there's other, there's definitely other things to to be concerned about as well. But these I wouldn't call, consider these murder. I would consider these like they're like risks uh, that bees undergo, and probably wild bees undergo similar risks. If they get varroa mites, they all die out. There's no real data on wild bees. Wild bees die from pests and parasites. Wild bees die from diseases. Wild bees are dying from uh, exposure to pesticides. Incidentally, these are incidental deaths. These are not murder, um, as he's framing it. But he's only doing this, right? To get a gotcha on the vegans and say you murder bees you murder them you're a murderer this is his whole mo this is what he does this is what he thinks works every single time it's actually the most lowest grade argumentation to go hey man you stepped on a bug so i can stab this child in the face like imagine that just everyone appealed to hypocrisy all the time imagine going to the judge hey you know what like your honor like why should I listen to you about this mass shooting that I just committed when, you know, one time you stepped on a snail? You're a hypocrite. You murdered a snail. All now right. Listen, so you don't six, care about the law. Only 6% die from pesticides, so it's not a really a rights violation. They're not murdering the bees. Joey, here's dying. my point. The bees big are pig, just, no, big pig, one pig. Second. a big pig makes you cry. They a little bee, you don't, you don't care. If I was going to choose one to live, and I know this is just in a hypothetical situation, obviously a pig and a bee have vastly different experiences. You know, comparing experience and sentience of a bee to the experience and sentience of a pig, obviously a pig is experiencing a lot deeper level of sentience to a bee. It's questionable whether many insects are even sentient at all or experience anything to any non-trivial degree at all like a lot of insects you can cut them in half and they still feed normally but see how he likes to equate animals now i don't even, i don't equate animals you could probably equate like a, a pig and a dog and a cow and a lamb kind of thing very very similar in sentience but you can't equate like a pig a dog and a cow to a beetle you know what i mean no listen you don't care about there's no reason to be upset about sometimes, pollination sometimes 50 they die from billion... mice. why aren't you angry at the mice hang on joey barrel of mice sort of shout over each other Sometimes 50 billion bees. Stop shouting over each other, the hypocrite. He just would not let me get a word edgeways in. When the other guy speaks, he just lets him talk, 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 talk. But me, he had he ambushed, he constantly, you know, berated. And then um, now he's gone back to 50 billion bees. I think he uses, he's using like a 2019 stat. I think back then there was an issue with uh, maybe the mixture of two pesticides. I think they solved that, that issue. But the main killer of honeybee colonies is uh, varroa mites. So die in six from weeks mites. to give you vegans I've literally just your told you almonds and avocados. No, that's uh, not true. These are agricultural stats that is from not America. true. That's the latest data, Pierce. Agri uh, I gave him a copy of this, by the way, at the end of it. Read, the, gu lying. read the Guardian. I, I read it in an article, Let an me... anecdote, so it must be true. Listen. Joey. Basically, what I'm saying is the Guardian, um, yes, they are a prestigious newspaper. They do a lot of uh, good research. But like what they, in that article, they were using like opinions of beekeepers and things like this. Um, but you do have to look at the data. And um, there might be some pretty good reasons that the bee pollination needs a bit of reform. And I think they're, they're working on some of the issues with the welfare of the bees and stuff like that. But um, to use a Guardian article as your evidence is not good evidence. Um, you know, we need to look at actual data and then um, see what you can actually prove. And basically, Pierce's whole argument, you don't care about the little guys. He doesn't care about anyone. If there was a boycott of almonds, it would be vegans who would be the first to do it. Most vegans already boycott the commercial honey industry anyway. Now, he doesn't do any of it. He doesn't boycott any animal product at all. He doesn't care about animals at all. And he goes on to say that. Even from a welfare perspective, he doesn't care about factory farming, cruelty, and all these things. I'm an animal rights activist. He certainly wouldn't care about animal rights, um, which is why I asked him about animal cruelty, because that's a language he can understand. I mean, you start talking about animal rights with this guy, it's probably not going to get anywhere. And most of the audience can understand animal cruelty, and which is why I spoke about gas chambers, which is known to be cruel and a rights violation. So he doesn't care about the little guys. He just cares about calling vegans hypocrites so he can continue to eat his meat. And, you know, this is a show. This is a show. Pierce is going to be the anti-vegan. You're the vegan. I'm, I'm grateful they let me on, to be honest. How long have you been a vegan? Uh, Ten years. Right. Do you actually, because you seem quite agitated to me. Like you want a it's bit just of... spout nonsense about bees being murdered when they die from mice. They are murdered. <laughs> they're murdered. And he keeps saying they're murdered. They're murdered. They're not actually murdered. Like, I don't know if he understands what murder... Well, ugh, God. Pigs are obviously being murdered. He's acting like it's so clear-cut, the topic of bee pollination. There's so many moving parts. I read this whole systematic review here, and they're, they're, there's so many things they don't know. There's so many different variables. There's so many different weather variables. There's so many different things to consider. The bee management of each different hive or each different... Um, beekeeper is different and whether they've used certain treatments for mites and you know uh, what time of the year it is and what hives other hives are being exposed to and even in, in the honey industry they keep hives close together so they can spread pathogens and 
you know, there's so many different things to consider, even like bees flying over, like wild bees flying over and getting inside their hives can cause issues. And, but in any event, how would you call it murder, even if he was right? But do you think, in a way, you represent what I feel about me? Is that you're all no, quite listen, hangry? You, are you against animal cruelty, Piers? Yes. Then why do you support animal cruelty when you support the meat? I don't. Industry? I've defended the bees for years. No. I don't support animal cruelty, but you promote every other animal product known to man. But you've got a massive problem with almonds and avocados, of which you don't boycott yourself. And you don't even boycott the honey industry. And you're not even like a, a bee rights activist. By logical extension, if you were to care about bees, you would care about every other sentient being that are of a higher sentience level than bees, so you'd care about fish, you would be trying to reduce your rights violations across the board, but he doesn't try to do any of that. He's a maximum animal rights violator, and all he does is, I want to kill all the animals, eat them all, you can't tell me nothing because you eat almonds. Well, they're, they're not murdered, they die from oh, mites. billions of bees are murdered, we, so that you, you vegans can eat almonds honey? and avocados. We've got honey where, they, where they're hired, hired from. John, let me, let me bring in John here. See how if you keep repeating something long enough, people just accept it as facts. Billions of bees are murdered, so you can. It's, it just keeps repeating it. And then I ask him if he boycotts honey, and no. Nah, then he goes over to John. Don't want to talk about that. Hey, John, what I'm trying to say is vegans are hypocrites. Do you agree? Uh, John, look, here's my point about the vegans. There's a lot of hypocrisy, as there is with all these debates, right? Which is that if you want to eat almonds and avocados as a vegan... It's quite funny, too. Like, when he's saying eating almonds and avocados is bad, he's basically talking about the entire population. I mean, the reason that there's a bunch of almonds being grown anyway is not to supply the 1% of the world that are vegan. It's to supply... Let's just look this up right now. I'll show you what the majority of almonds are used for. Uh, so cereal and granola bars for almond milk for vegans. But let's keep going. You feel virtuous. You think you're saving the planet as well. Actually, neither of those things are true. Billions of bees get killed to make almonds and avocados. They might die, but they're not getting murdered. That's the whole point, mate. And making the claim that vegans are bee murderers because of this is just a lofty claim with no evidence. Uh, and also they fly them men around the world or they truck them around the world and of course that is terrible for, for, the, for the planet. They truck animal products around the world. He doesn't care about what's terrible for the, the planet anyway. Like, you know, it's Piers Morgan. You're flying on a private jet everywhere. He's eating steak every day, red meat. You know, like the animal products, like I said, I jumped in. Like animal products are trucked all over the planet. Like, what is he talking about? Do you believe, John, that there's a kind of basic hypocrisy here with the vegans? Yeah, like you can say that with a straight face, Piers. He once mentioned he had a problem with eating dogs. He's mentioned he's opposed to poaching. He mentioned that he wanted to see Walter Palmer murdered and head decapitated and hung above a desk because Walter Palmer shot a lion. You know, so he has spoken out against uh, issues that he cares about, like poaching and, you know, stuff like that. For some reason, he cannot accept any responsibility or admit any responsibility of the meat industry for harming animals. There's a, a strange correlation that they have between um, eating meat and death and murder. There's a strange correlation between, like vegans have between murdering animals with a knife in the neck and murder. It's really weird, like it's so strange. I'm, I'm like, I don't know what what they're talking about. Like it's, it's a very bizarre, strange, weird correlation they just pulled out of their backside that when you murder an animal, that is murder. Which they like to keep promoting that murderous side. I think if they look up the definition of murder, you know, this is human versus human, uh, and that is it, you know. You know, like, if you look up the definition of murder, it's this is human versus human, even though there are, like, multiple definitions that apply to animals. I could Google them up. You can Google them yourself. Check the Collins, uh, Collins Dictionary. Uh, there's to slay wantingly. There's to kill brutally. There's a bunch of others as well. Because his definition doesn't apply to animals, it's not a moral issue to stab a knife into the neck of an animal to eat their body? Like, is that your claim, mate? I'm 100% against animal cruelty. And for him to <laughs> bring up the Great British Menu, well, it just shows his mentality, you know. He, yeah, I brought up the Great British Menu because you chucked a wobbly because you got a two-star review for a fish dish and you didn't ban all fish eaters because of it. You didn't ban all meat eaters. It also was a perfect example of how you can't take criticism and you blow up and overreact and start smashing shit up, you know, which is what you've done here. You basically blown up, overreacted and banned all vegans. It's not what we're about. I think each should be to their own and you should just enjoy your life. Yeah, enjoy your life while you're killing animals. It's okay for you, mate. <laughs> Imagine him walking down the same kill floor that the animals had to walk down in order to be served in his crappy restaurant. If they're going to argue, Piers, uh, I feel killing that animals they should enjoy your life. But, but Joey, why oh can't you... Why are you killing animals? Look at this. Joey, it's Post a pig. the murdered pig. It's, a pig. it's a pig. And he's saying, that's beautiful, Joey. That's beautiful, Joey. You know, he thinks that 
uh, posing with a murdered animal, of which if you look through the comments section, which we want to say, most people are against him for that. Uh, and that's why I actually used it to show his character when it comes to animals, the desecrating the remains of animals. You can't handle a simple complaint from a... And this woman, she's a very nice but Joe, woman. But Joey, I spoke to this young woman. Yeah. She's very nice, very kind, very polite. And yeah. you can't handle a simple complaint... Joey, let me ask you a question. Celebrity chef. Joey. And it's clear... Joey. Even meat eaters complain about <laughs> his restaurant. He doesn't ban all meat Joey. eaters. Do you see how he kept, con like, interrupting me? Didn't interrupt this guy once, right? And he kept interrupting me. Three words, and he just jumps in, Joey, 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 because that's his MO. I'm the side he disagrees with. He wants to drown me out, make a fool out of me, do a little humiliation thing to me here and have them to just run the show. But it actually backfired on him. If you, want to, be, if you want to be a vegan, I don't care, right? You're an idiot. <laughs> well, good one, mate. Did you pull that insult out of the dictionary next to your definition of murder? It's Prosperity. entirely down to you. But if you, about bees being if you want to, they're man. not being slaughtered. Billions of bees. He doesn't know what slaughter means, eh? It's weird. Everyone go Billions and Google. Billions of bees are getting killed okay. by mites. Here's what, here's what I say. To everyone, to everyone watching this, either on the show tonight or on YouTube later, go and Google bees. US Department bees, of Agriculture staff. Almonds, right here. avocados, yeah. and you'll see the truth. Um, the truth. Go Even on. The Guardian, where they all are compelled to eat lentils every day when they wear their sandals to work. He uses a source from The Guardian who he criticises and thinks they're all lentil-eating sandal wearers, whatever that means. When I show him actual agricultural statistics, uh, it's actually the number one killer is actually mites and parasites. He still goes back to that source. And then I've shown you with this varroa mite when it comes to like migratory bees, they're really not certain if migration has any effect on this varroa mite. In, in fact, there's studies that show migration actually has a positive effect on reducing varroa mites. So, yeah. This is a gas chamber piss. This is how pigs are killed and slaughtered in the UK. This is my is. investigation. Can I ask you a question? Why don't you Watch play it. me? The reason I pulled out the gas chamber footage, I thought I'd take the opportunity to raise awareness about this, this issue to Piers Morgan because he kept stifling, shutting down, ambushing, interrupting. He wouldn't let me speak. There wasn't going to be a proper discussion, proper debate. All Pierce wanted to do was shout me down, you're a murderer, you're a murderer, you murder bees. So I didn't really have many other options. You know, he wouldn't let me finish any of my sentences. Um, he kept cutting away to the other guy. He kept saying, just check out The Guardian, this and that. He, he just wouldn't drop that topic, right? So my idea was I'm going to disrupt the show a little bit and show some gas chamber footage and put the music up loud. And this is the investigation that I did at Pilgrim's Pride. Why don't you play me the sound of billions of bees being murdered? Well, I know that Would animals get killed so I can eat peas. They're screaming to death. Right. Look at them, face them. What do you think bees do? Face them, they're screaming what do you think to death. He wouldn't look at the phone, so, so Pierce is like looking at me. I'm showing him in and I can see he's looking at me in the eyes, but he won't look at the phone and that's why I started to call him a coward because he, he was looking away. What do you do when you murder them? They're, they get killed by mice. Bees don't get murdered by me. <laughs> What are you talking about? We wouldn't face the pigs. This is gas huh? chamber. Look at it. No, no, no. You they don't get, even want to look at it. They get coward. slaughtered. You're a coward. I'm not cowardly. Look at it. I know that animals get They're slaughtered so that I can eat animal yeah. meat. I've stuck this camera in this gas chamber in the UK at Pilgrim's Pride, mm. and they scream for their lives. And every single animal welfare. Uh, here's charity my problem. Against here's them. my problem. And you uh, eat bacon and you promote it. He promotes meat, right? And he doesn't even know what he's promoting, and he doesn't care uh, about. Well, maybe if he actually looked into this a little more, he might take a little bit of a back foot on it. Maybe he'll look into gas chambers. Maybe he won't. Maybe he prefers to keep his head in the sand. He'll maybe maybe he'll look more into pollination and try to get another gotcha. You know, he promotes something he doesn't really know the seriousness of it. Um, and I just hope he he does look into this a little more and just pulls his, pulls away a little bit from promoting the meat industry because man, things that he's accepting implicitly by promoting the meat industry, some of the most horrible things on earth. I love bacon. You promote it. You I love promote, bacon. You, you say you're against that. I love cruelty. sausages. <laughs> I love it all. I love eating meat. You love animal cruelty. Yeah. I got him there. I said, you love animal cruelty? And he said, yeah, gotcha. I'm prepared yeah. to admit I love eating meat. You're not prepared to denounce avocado and because almonds. Because you're making up stats. That you, they, they don't get because they He wants me to denounce almonds and avocados, which I don't really see a reason to, but he won't denounce the meat industry, even though I've just shown him gas chamber footage. Actually lead to Pollination the extermination of millions of bees. bees Final word to John. Yeah, they want to keep the bees alive. They want them coming home. It's not slaughtering them. In fact, if you want to talk about slaughtering them, Sometimes uh, honeybee producers in the honey industry will cull off an entire hive or a bunch of hives. That would be more like slaughter. John, is there anything that would persuade your mind to let vegans in? Because obviously he'd be a fantastic Sorry, guest in your restaurant. The only time I'd go to this guy's restaurant is to, to bring some gas chamber footage in to show his customers. It's just discrimination, isn't it? Thank yeah. you, Piers. I Discriminating do against I the couldn't. whole group I didn't of people. Hear you then. It's just absolute childish, childish behavior, discriminating against the whole group of people 
because of uh, one little silly complaint. Go ahead. Joey, when, was, Joey, when was the last time Danny. you laughed? When's the last time you laughed? The thing about Pierce, right? Pierce has got his his narrative, okay? Off camera, he was quite nice. Like, you know, I shook his hand and I said, long time no see, Pierce. And, we, you know, we had a bit of banter and it just seems like he's just hung up on this vegan thing and it's just a constant trope for him. What I really didn't like about Pierce is when he got all of Animal Rebellion on and just completely bullied her and ambushed her, didn't let her speak, then ate a burger in front of her. That study in Oxford, is, that is exactly Get what it is the about. Planet. No, anyway, it, look, it I'm starving and uh, you're not going to persuade me. And my response to you destroying all these things is to have a Big Mac. Because you know what? It's a free country, it's a democracy, and I'm allowed to eat meat, and I'm certainly allowed to eat meat when someone who kills bees to feed their avocado habit minds. What we're asking is for the government to support farm. And like, I could see her getting a little bit teary and she, it was just terrible. I just didn't like seeing that. Him saying, hey, hey, Joey, when's the last time you laughed? I think he was trying to like lighten me up a little bit. <laughs> this was my response. Last time I laughed, when I heard you say thing? that all bees are slaughtered because of avocados, it's an absolute abject it's lie. Ab it's, it's an absolute lie. fact. You, and you can't, facts it's don't care about your feelings, Pierce. Can I get a word facts word don't right. care about He's saying bees are slaughtered for avocados, which is just not true. It's not factually accurate. You could make claims like bees die during pollination in some sort, like incidental deaths happen during pollination or during transport or something like this, or they get exposed to this pest or this pesticide or they get exposed to this parasite. But they're not getting murdered, <laughs> are they, mate? This isn't a rights violation. Moving bees around, is it? this isn't an animal rights issue. It's not a negative rights violation. They're not murdering all these bees for an avocado. Like, you know, this is what you're perpetuating. And, you know, and you see that he see him smiling a bit. It's an it's absolute a fact. You, it's an absolute fact. <laughs> Piers, mate, you're hilarious. See his face is kind of smiling. <laughs> This is, I can't get over this bit, man. He's trolling, dude. Hard. He's trolling hard. He's the king anti vegan troll. And, and you know, the funny thing about it was that last time I laughed, I've laughed three, four times in this conversation, Pierce. You haven't noticed? When's the last time you laughed? Well, since your memory lapsed <laughs> three seconds ago, dude. And you can't, facts don't it's care about your feelings, Pierce. Deniable. Can I get a word facts, don't care about facts don't care about feelings, mate. Varroa mites, mate. So he should be anti varroa mite. I want to see on his uh, t-shirt next time, varroa mites murder bees. And he should be out there campaigning against the varroa mite because they're murdering so many bees. 50% of them are killed by just the varroa mite alone. You know what I mean? Yeah, John, yeah, final word to you. And John, final word to you, mate. Final word is how many vegans does it take to change a light bulb? Go on. None. They all prefer <laughs> to stay in the dark. Well, wait for the punchline. Look at him. Look at this guy. Ah, despise this dude, eh? Acts all tough around like, oh, vegans come to my restaurant, mate. Watch, blah, 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 blah. absolute shell of a man. This guy, just a coward, animal abuser. Like, you know, look at him. Look at his profile picture. Dude's a <laughs> but like, I wanted to ruin his little punchline. You know, look at him I'm trying to make a stupid joke in the face of all this abuse, and I've just shown gas chamber footage. What, what about vegans like to stay in the dark? You like to stay in the dark, mate. You don't even know pigs are murdered in gas chambers, and if you do, do oh, he probably does know. He probably doesn't give a. You know, you two want to stay in the dark. Vegans are actually more in the light than all of you put together. And if, if it was anyone who cares about the bees, it's the vegans, right? It's going to be the vegans. If it's anyone who's going to care about some animal issue, it's going to be the vegans. True? Or is it going to be you two meathead buffoons who stick corpses down your throat? What's the punchline? Uh, None uh, what? Oh, uh, you want to hear the punchline, do you, Pierce? Oh, did I ruin your little <laughs> joke? Did I, mate? Sorry, buddy. Sorry, mate. Go have a cry, mate. They always prefer to stay in the dark. Go have a cry about the complaint I said to him, you know, like, go have a cry, mate. I had no time for this dude, to be honest with you. And if anyone thinks I'm going to sit there while well, this dude, this idiot, right? This absolute idiot, coward, snowflake, animal abuser, taking photos with dead piglets, banning all vegans. You think I'm going to sit there and treat him with anything less than contempt? Then you're talking to the wrong activist. <laughs> go have a cry. Actually, the other one I like is, how do you know when someone's vegan? Look at Pierce, he's noticeably uncomfortable. That was the fakest laugh. I've ever heard in my life, Pierce. Mate, as well as the award for the Ronaldo interview, you should have also gotten an award for the world's biggest fake laugher, biggest anti-vegan troll, and the biggest fake laugh I've ever seen, trying to make him feel better. And look at him. Look at this guy's face. God, uh, you think he thought that was funny? He fake laughed. Don't I'll worry. See gas chamber footage. Don't worry. The UK. They'll, they'll soon tell you. Him. And then I ruined his too. <laughs> How do you know someone's vegan? They'll show you gas chamber footage. Play uh, pictures and stuff of people of screaming. Pigs being murdered in gas. What they won't play you is bees being well, murdered. Oh, he Freudian slip there. They're like non-human people, aren't they? These pigs and uh, 
you know, I think I flossed him a bit by interrupting. You met his match a bit here in terms of his aggression because you have to go at Pierce fiercely. Otherwise, he'll talk over you and he's, he is powerful in his voice and he's quick on his toes. But I think I, because I was interjecting here when they were trying to make their stupid jokes and humiliate me and vegans and sh- humiliate the animals, I was interjecting with my own little sound bites, ruined, ruined uh, Snowflake's uh, little meat flake here's uh, joke and then a ruined little Pierce's little finishing joke. Uh, Joey, great brilliant. to see you. Bless John, you, thank you for joining brilliant. me from Perth. I go vegan, it. Pierce. Yeah, go vegan, Pierce. Joey, great to see you. <laughs> when I left, I actually said to Pierce, here's the data, Pierce. They're not actually being slaughtered, so can you please change, at least change your rhetoric a bit? You know, they're not being murdered, are they? So, And he goes, look into it, look into it. And I said, sit, I'll see you next time, mate. And I actually got some vegan donuts from Donut Time and brought them all in for the staff, about half a dozen for them. Really delicious ones too, filled with Biscoff, cream, everything. I said, I've got some vegan donuts out there for you, Pierce. You can take one if you like. And he goes, uh, I'd rather shoot myself. <laughs> You'd rather shoot yourself than have a Biscoff filled donut? Like, what is the matter with you, dude? You're fine drinking piss, but you don't want the vegan donuts I brought you. That's just, he's just a contrarian. He just does everything the opposite to, to what he doesn't like. If you're a vegan, I don't want to eat that. But if Bear grills, I'll drink his piss. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, God, it's just hilarious. Horrible violence and cruelty and animal rights violations. No joke. It's the most sick, disgusting thing you're ever going to witness, right? That's all fine, but incidental deaths in bee pollination mate that's horrible vegans are murderers so let's look at some of these comments this is on pierce morgan's channel so i won the comment section i actually won the comment section so these are all black because i've given them my own little like so if you could you want to go like the top comments actually if you'd like to see the footage i was showing pierce let's just put that there i don't want to overwhelm them. anyone want to find my comment like it to the top I'm not a vegan, but Pierce definitely didn't destroy this vegan. Pierce is a little embarrassing here and has no idea what he's talking about. Top one of the top comments. I'm a meat eater, but the vegan man made Morgan look like a fool going on about bees, but ignoring other animals being killed. Where's the part where Pierce destroys the vegan? Because they actually called this Pierce Morgan destroys vegans, but not caring about all animals' rights. And people are just asking, when did he get destroyed? This is a very good example of how a journalist should, journalist should not behave. Appalling to witness such a degree of professional corruption. Imagine thinking you actually destroyed someone by such a poor, poor argument. I wish Piers Morgan would let his guests finish their arguments before presenting his. Piers Morgan is doing more for the vegan cause than anyone. I'm not vegan, but would, would never have a moan at them for caring about animals. I don't think this went how Piers <laughs> thinks it went. I'm not a vegan, but it sounds like the chef needs to learn to handle criticism better and Piers needs to learn what the word destroys means. <laughs> this should be the top comment, actually. If I held my breath until Piers let his guests speak, I'd be dead. Wrong title there. It literally happened the opposite. That one there is probably, I think that's one of the top comments actually of this whole video. I'm not even vegan, but Pierce and that chef were insufferable in this interview. I honestly think the vegan guy came out so reasonable and I'm no, and no, I'm not a vegan. Someone hit the nail on the head here. Pierce doesn't give a about the bees. I think Pierce actually got destroyed in this one. Problem with Pierce is he sits there, asks questions of the person he disagrees with, and then constantly tries to interrupt them while the person is answering on top of putting words in their mouth. Then he sits there and lets the guest he agrees with have their say uninterrupted and taking as long as they wish. He ain't fooling everyone with his shit tactics. In this case, I think everyone in this interview, including Pierce, are full of it. Everyone? Okay, so you started off good and now you think I'm full of it too? Why am I full of it? Joey won this debate. You can see how Pierce is trying to hide his anger and annoyance, but his face speaks volumes. Turning to fake laughter to try to win is very immature. Yeah, that was a fake laugh, dude. I don't think I've ever seen a more misleading title. I feel bad for Pierce if he seriously believes this is true. I don't know if Pierce titles these videos. I don't think he manages the social media, to be honest. And if that's the case, this reinforces the notion that Karnas are the ones who prefer to stay in the dark. I think they should leave the title. I like the title. I think this is great. It's, it's clickbait bring people in to the conversation. I think this is what the kind of title that draws people in for views. Now this, this, this debate has 300,000 views, man. So good. Don't get me wrong. The people at the Pierce Morgan show are really nice. Um, and Pierce is actually nice to me off camera as well. Um, we, me and him disagree vehemently on animal rights. He has been an insufferable bully to most vegans. He brings on the show. Um, he couldn't bully me around. Right. And I think there's a common respect there. The comment section is, is against Pierce on his own platform. I'm going to say this about Pierce Morgan, okay? So Pierce, if you're watching, and even if you're not, I'm still going to say it. What Pierce Morgan actually does takes a lot of courage, actually. Me and Pierce disagree on many different issues, okay? Animal rights being the main one, but a bunch of other issues as well. I've also seen Pierce do very fair interviews and actually do quite 
quite good journalism at times as well. It's just when he gets people on, he di vehemently disagrees. We don't want to let them talk. He interrupts him. He ambushes him and he bullies people that he, he knows he can. And he trolls people a lot too. So there's two sides of Pierce. But what I will say is that Pierce Morgan gets on people that intellectually disagree with him. It's not just people he knows he can win against as well. He often gets people on that are gonna <laughs> and are gonna win against him. So um, what, I made a video a while back where I was calling Macau, where you only get people on that you know you're gonna win against. Well. I stand corrected. They got me back on, so good on them. Cosmic Skeptic was even doing a debate with Piers Morgan on the monarchy before me, and that Cosmic Skeptic an, is an intellectual person, and Piers had two against one. Even Piers' own comment section was against him in my video, in, and I think in the monarchy video, video as well, but Piers still goes at it. Video after video after video gets all of this criticism, right? Puts himself in high-pressure situations live with people who are experts in that field, and you got to respect that. Then there's a lot of things I don't respect about the way Pierce carries himself, 100%. He's in, like, God, Pierce, you're, you're a proud animal abuser. Let's face it, you don't give a damn about the abuse that happens to animals. I mean, if you do, you're hiding it, dude, or you just don't want to admit it because then you'd have to be compelled to change him, wouldn't you? But yeah, if someone who gets up on a public platform like that, constantly challenging themselves every single day with people who disagree with them and intellects who disagree with them and then posting it on your social media, that takes a lot of courage. It actually does. And so that's one thing I'll say about respecting the respect that I have for people like Pierce Morgan, who can just get up there, get... <laughs> get wrecked in some of his debates and he doesn't get wrecked in all of his debates sometimes he's comes out on top sometimes he has really good points about things but a lot of the time um he uses cheap tactics you know um but yeah so there you go that's my that's my positive feedback to pierce morgan even though we disagree on a bunch of topics um what he does takes a lot of gusto and if you don't think so then try getting up there yourself people have a lot of opinions about what they would do up against pierce morgan in the vegan movement and things like that go and give it a crack I, I guarantee you that 99.9% .9 of people would be publicly embarrassed in a situation like that. So before you sit there and go, hey, Joey, you should have said that. You should have done this. Why didn't you do this? Oh, I would have done a heaps better, which I've got one today. I'll read it out to you. Where is it? Just an annoying know-it-all, right? Pierce are a piece of, but Joey can't handle it. He can't. He should be more prepared. After so many years, he should be taking this opportunity differently like Ed Winters would do. Ed can hold his own. I'll give him that. But in that kind of situation, you have to interrupt. You have to be forceful. Otherwise, you're not going to get a word in edgeways. And Pierce has got a very good strategy. And if you think you can do better, mate, um, why don't you get up there and do it? I said, I bet my life on it. You would crumble under the pressure of being ambushed, interrogated, and interrupted on live TV while outnumbered. Easy to talk from the comfort of your own home. But I guarantee you, Pierce would have publicly embarrassed you if you were in my position. So pipe down, you little hater, until you can do better. If you think you can do better, get up there and do it. You, you got to remember you're getting ambushed on live TV. He's constantly berating you. He's not letting you answer. You have to try to block his voice out of one ear and try to get a point out, um, you know, and it's always 2v1. That's my little response video to the Pierce Morgan debate. Uh, it's a long one probably, but um, yeah, what do you guys think down below? I just want to thank the staff at Pierce Morgan for being so accommodating, knowing that I was going to get ambushed by Pierce, but I knew what I was getting into, you know, and, uh, you know, Pierce... I thought he would uh, disrespect me and the animals by eating meat in front of me, but he didn't do that. So he shouldn't do it anyway, but that's at least a consolation. And um, if Pierce would, I would like Pierce to have a longer form discussion with me, maybe 20 minutes like he did with Dale Vince the other day. And uh, let's get into these topics with a little bit more, with a little bit less heat and a little bit more nuance, you know what I mean? And maybe he can present some of these arguments and we can discuss them better instead of him trying to just corner you and ambush you, you know, and just inter interrogate you and interrupt you constantly. So yeah. Thank you all for watching. What did you guys think? Leave it down below and I'll see you all in the next video.